Still no idea which proficiency test to take? Well, if the institution you want to apply for allows you to do either the TOEFL or IELTS, it's very important to know how each one works to see which is a better fit for you. Hey guys, welcome to the channel Nova Tips. I'm Leo Nova, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the differences between the TOEFL and IELTS. I've collected some questions, interesting points, and analyzed the major differences between the two tests. I'm gonna share them with you right now in this video. The TOEFL and IELTS are the main proficiency tests for those who want to study or work abroad. Some institutions accept both, but in general, the TOEFL is more predominant in the US and the IELTS in Canada, Europe, the United Kingdom and Australia. Now, let's understand how each one works. The two tests are divided into four competencies. Reading, listening, speaking and writing, as you may know. They are based on an academic context and you don't need to have prior knowledge of any specific subject to take these tests. You don't need to memorize formulas, know the name of cities, nothing like that. You will only be evaluated on your knowledge of English in both. The results of both tests are only valid for two years, but the similarities don't go much further than that. And the TOEFL grades vary from 0 to 120, and each section is worth 30 points. In the IELTS, on the other hand, each section is worth 1 to 9 points, and grades vary from half to half points, that is, you can score 3.5, 4.5, and so on. The TOEFL test is longer. It lasts approximately 3 hours and a half, while the IELTS test lasts around 2 hours and 45 minutes. Both tests are available in two formats. What I mean by that is, depending on your goal, you have to know which is the most suitable for you to take. The TOEFL has two versions, IBT, Internet-based, and ITP, Institutional Program. The big difference between them is the following. The IBT is the version accepted by companies and universities around the world, while the ITP is the version for those who want to take the test for personal reasons. It doesn't make much sense to me, but it is what it is. The majority of institutions require the IBT version, but you should always check with the institution just to be sure, okay? I wouldn't worry too much about the ITP version. Most likely, it's not for you. For this reason, in this video here, when I talk about TOEFL, I mean the IBT version, okay? Nova, what about the TOEFL PBT, the paper-based one? You didn't mention it. Well, this version hasn't been around since 2012, so don't worry about this anymore, okay? The IELTS is available in two versions as well, general and academic. If your goal is to work or immigrate, for instance, you will probably be required to do the general version. If your goal is to go to university to do an undergraduate program or MBA, then you will be required to do the academic version. Both are paper-based, which means you don't have to use a computer to do either test. Nova, are there any real differences between IELTS General, IELTS Academic and TOEFL? Yes, there are quite a few differences, which I'll point out as we go over section by section, okay? But first, don't forget to hit the like button to motivate me to keep producing more content like this for you. <laughs> this section, the TOEFL has an advantage. While in the TOEFL, every question is multiple choice, in both versions of the IELTS test, there are questions in which you need to write down the word correctly. That is, your spelling will be tested as well. Both the TOEFL and the IELTS academic explore readings extracted from textbooks. The texts in the IELTS general are about from everyday life situations, newspaper ads, magazines, in this section, the questions in the TOEFL are multiple choice. In addition, the questions are organized in the same logical order as the audio, which makes it much easier. The IELTS, on the other hand, has three sections with questions like filling in the blanks, multiple choice, and choosing two or three options among several. In other words, it is more dynamic and, in my opinion, 
more complex than TOEFL. Oh, and on top of that, in the TOEFL, you only hear American accent, while in the IELTS, it, it is mainly British. TOEFL has again a slight advantage here. Well, at least for me. I live in the US, come on. I would say that this is the most different section among all the tests. In the TOEFL, there is no interlocutor. The activity is presented on the computer and you use a headset to record your answer, which is sent to an examiner to be assessed afterwards. This section in the TOEFL requires more training because you have a certain amount of time to answer, which you cannot exceed. But at the same time, you need to take full advantage of the time given. So don't just say a couple of sentences and think you are off the hook. In both versions of the IELTS, however, you will be interviewed by an examiner. Yes, an actual person in front of you, which can be intimidating for some and comforting for others. All the questions are related to daily situations, like what you do in your free time? Why you like this or that? In this section, you can say that there is a technical tie. In both the TOEFL and IELTS, you are expected to write two essays. The first essay differs in all three tests. Nova, did you say three? Isn't it TOEFL and IELTS we are talking about? Which is this third one? Yes, I said three. Question one is different the two IELTS versions as well. In the TOEFL, you have to read the text, listen to an audio, and organize everything you read and hear, summarizing it in a single essay. In the IELTS academic, however, you have to interpret data from a table, graph, or something like that. It is important to know comparative words and a variety of verbs to do the analysis. Please do not express your opinion in the academic version. Again, do not express your opinion. The task is about describing the table, graph, or whatever, and not about your opinion on the matter. And finally, in the IELTS general, you only have to write a letter, which means you need to understand letter formats, whether it's formal, informal, to someone you know, or someone you don't. The second question is the same in all three, TOEFL, IELTS Academic, and IELTS General. That is, basically, you have to express your opinion on a given subject. The difference, though, is that in the TOEFL, you have 30 minutes to type your answer, and in the IELTS, both versions, you have 40 minutes to write it down. Here on this channel, there are videos talking about each section of each test. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified every time I post a new video and stay on top of what you need to score higher. All the important links are down here in the description, okay? But Nova, how do I get ready for it if I don't even know if my pronunciation is correct? Well, that's the thing. I recommend watching a lot of movies and TV shows, in English, of course, listening to a lot of music to get used to hearing how the words sound. It is a long process, though, but it helps a lot. Now, if you really want to develop your skills to write better, listen better, and speak better, then I recommend that you have a private tutor. I would say this is the best investment for your preparation, especially if you don't have a lot of spare time to study or if the test is just around the corner. Buying books and courses online may help you, but from my experience, the benefits are not worth the cost. But be very careful also because not everyone who speaks English can help you with that. I myself wouldn't be able to teach someone for such a test. You need a professional with enough experience able to help you for real. What I can do for you though is refer the professional who has helped me improve my English and is more than capable to help you master the exam. She has more than 15 years of experience and has helped many people for tests like these. Her name is Anna Gingley. She currently lives in London. If your goal is to score high at the very first time you take the test and not do like I did four times until I get the grade I needed, I strongly recommend Anna or any qualified professional you may know. Her contact info is available here in the description, okay? <laughs> As I said before, the TOEFL ranges from 0 to 120, 30 points per section, and the IELTS ranges from 1 to 9 in each section. Yeah, Nova, you said that, but what is the minimum to pass in either test? 
That's an important question. You don't pass these tests. There is no such thing. They were designed to determine your current level of English. The institution you apply to determines the minimum level they want. For example, University XYZ requires a minimum of 80 on the TOEFL, while University ABC requires 90. This means if you get 86, you would be admitted to XYZ University, but you wouldn't be admitted by ABC. Did you get the difference? There are also other factors for you to take into consideration, okay? Here, we are just considering the level of English. It is important to pay attention to the minimum requirements of the institution, because sometimes it may require a minimum of 80 points in the TOEFL, for instance, but also a score of more than 20 in each section. Different from the TOEFL, the IELTS doesn't consider the total score. If this part was kind of confusing, leave your comment below and I'll make sure to record a more detailed video explaining this, okay? The TOEFL scores are available online on the ETS website, institution responsible for the TOEFL, around 10 days after you take the test. And after about a month, you receive the printed document with your grades at home by mail, at the address you provided, of course. The IELTS scores, however, are not available online. You only receive your results at your home around 10 to 15 days after the test. I've also recorded this video here with more common questions about the tests that can help you with questions like how to do the test, if you can retake the test, and so on. You can click on the card up here or in the link that I'll leave in the description, okay? <laughs> And the big final question is, who wins the dispute? The TOEFL or IELTS? Well, I would say that you win the dispute. Information is the best way to get ready for anything in life. Now you know that the TOEFL is a more straightforward test. The IELTS, on the other hand, requires a more solid knowledge base. But it also has its advantages, as I mentioned it in this video. Which one is the best? The best is the one you feel more comfortable doing. I suggest practicing a little of both to see which one you identify with the most. This is the best way to decide. It is not enough to just know how to speak English to do these tests. You also need to get used to their format. This is the secret formula for doing well in them. From me, you can get every tip you need to get ahead of the game. If there's something I haven't covered yet, just write down here in the comments what your question is about and I'll make sure to address it in another video for you. I hope this content has helped you to understand the differences between the TOEFL and the IELTS, and see you in the next videos!